So uh, we've been talking about this all morning, these uh, little MAGA douchebags taunting the Native American. Uh, and you were saying uh, that, that Madeline has, uh, what happened to her school this week? Well, Madeline this week has had a whole conference on bullying in which they've had bullying in their school. Yeah. And this is L.A. where one would think, okay, this is only regulated to certain areas. But I think now that the cap is on, we have to expect that people are going to emulate that behavior. Did you mean relegated? Yeah. Re yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm silently uh, judging your grammar. Relegated. Uh, it, I'm learning to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the CIA is, though. One yeah. point up. But <laughs> what's happened is I think when you have a leader putting that hat on, you've given permission all across the country that you can behave and act and speak this way. You can yeah. name call. You can bully. You can assume your, you know, your white supremacy because of your skin color. How you is a mom? Do we put this genie back in the bottle when he's gone? Well, it's what you know. It's been an interesting week. Like I said, they had a, a contract. The students all had to sign about their behavior, and yeah. about what bullying is, and they had a big, um, you know, discussion. And one of the things that I found most profound about it, because it shifted my own perspective, was uh, we always think of two people: the bully and the victim. When in fact, the majority involved are the bystanders. Yeah. The majority of the people in this room will be a bystander. Yeah. And it's what you do as the bystander that's going to change this yeah. behavior. Because the yeah. bully relies on fear and silence. As long as bystanders are silent, yeah. the bully's going to yeah. continue to win. Everything you makes you say makes sense, except that you just told me that I am uh, uh, that Madeline looks up to me and I'm one of her mentors. And I think, uh, Travis, that's a parenting issue in my personal opinion, but... You know, not you all know, choices are good I choices. Well, well, she has you and Gloria Allred, so okay. well, that you balance balances. each other out. Sure. Well, it's like in the cartoon where there's like the little devil and the little angel on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know which one Steffi is. <laughs> Gloria, fight on. Fart. Fight on. Yeah, Fart. I think we do know Fart which machine. One. Fart machine. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Madeline is always the more mature of the two of us when we're together. Actually, I'm not entirely sure that's correct. <clears throat> all right. Well, I always put fake eggshells in her sheets. Yeah. This is how you know it's a Hollywood kid. Remember we were at, uh, what was it? It was your birthday dinner, Catherine? Uh, and I tried to take uh, her, Madeline's picture and she just screamed, paparazzi! Oh, yeah. I was yeah. with my friend. <laughs> we all just started screaming paparazzi. Yeah, that's a Hollywood kid. Yeah, good okay. times. Good well, all right. So, but I mean, a lot of these bullying, you know, whether it's this Native American man, this poor, you know, Vietnam vet, or just kids, they keep chanting this build the wall. Right. Around anyone that looks like they're not, you know, it looks like they're different in any way. Well, right? that's, that's why I think it's so important to remind all of us that we're bystanders. And bystanders need to become upstanders. We need to change our behavior yeah. and speak and stand up. By the way, none of us would be here if the Indians had built a wall. I'm just that's saying. That's true. Well, the only thing that's going to stop a MAGA hat is a person with an education. Yeah. And so that's where we're at now, is yeah. that we have to educate ourselves on how to be better allies. And one thing that I, I speak about a lot in is that it's hard for white people to be allies because they're stuck in their guilt. Yeah. They don't they have to do two things for this to get better. White people have to accept that there's white privilege, recognize it, and then yeah. they have to give it up. Yeah. You're asking white people to give up their privilege. That's why they've done on a hat, put on a Trump shirt and say, No way. Yeah. I'm gonna keep I'm keeping my privilege and that's really what we're in now. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so you went to Women's March yesterday. Yes. yes. No, yeah. it was Saturday. Yep. Saturday. Oh right, I'm Saturday. sorry, yes, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Yes. And and that was really powerful, too, because I know people, we were saying that people have issues with certain aspects of the Women's March, and they tried to have people feel shame for going, but I still say every movement is messy. Yeah. The Equal Rights Movement tried to downplay lesbians because they didn't want to be seen as man-haters. They, right. they tried to downplay women of color because of their own personal racism. Yeah. And that movement got fractured. So let's not fracture ourselves. Let's yeah. stand for each other. Yeah, I love what was it here. There was the two marches, and one of them held a unity march that the other uh, marchers weren't invited to. That, I'm just saying. In the isn't an ironic file. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I read a letter, letter earlier saying, how can you possibly support AOC and Nancy Pelosi? I'm like, okay, thanks for playing Missing the Point entirely. Well, of, right, where we are at this moment in our history and how we have to... Hate, hate only divides communities, and love is only, the only thing that will bring us together. So if we can shift our focus... I mean, will this, love keep us together? It will. Believe it or not, it's the only thing that's going to bind us. <laughs> and all the continued division and hate is, is our problem here. Yeah, yeah.